What do you do when you crave something sweet, but you don't want the calories? Artificial sweeteners are both a symptom of this craving and an attempt to curb it, and some 200 million Americans are using them. But where do they come from? And are they safe to eat? It's time for the real dirt on fake sugars. In 1878, a 28-year-old scientist named Constantine Falberg was working at John Hopkins on coal tar extracts. Coal tar is a coal byproduct used to make things like parking lots and shampoo. Yum. One night on his way home to dinner, Constantine spotted something on his fingers. Instead of wiping it off, he licked them. And by doing so, he discovered the sweet taste of anhydroorthosulfamine benzoic acid, also known as saccharin. Also known as that stuff in those pink packets, like sweet and low. A substance over 300 to 500 times sweeter than sugar, but without the same calories. Although saccharin was marketed to the public soon after its discovery, it was not until sugar shortages during World War I that its use became widespread. Its popularity further increased during the 1960s and 1970s among dieters. It was during this time that saccharin was found to be a possible cause of bladder cancer in lab rats. Yummy. So Canada banned its use in 1977. The United States opted for a warning label instead. In the year 2000, lobbyists successfully presented a case that saccharin was shown not to be hazardous to human health. So, Congress passed the Sweetness Act, repealing the warning label requirement for products containing saccharin. But if you're a lab rat, it's probably best to avoid it. Moving on. In 1965, a chemist named James Schlatter was working in the lab on anti-ulcer medication. He was leafing through some lab papers and licked his fingers to pull up the pages. When he licked his fingers, he found the taste to be sweet. The reason being that his papers had become contaminated with a chemical. That chemical was aspartame, also known as that stuff in those blue packets, like Equal. The safety of aspartame has become the subject of controversies, internet hoaxes, and congressional hearings since its initial approval in 1981. Since December 1998, a widely circulated email hoax warned that aspartame is toxic to humans in a hundred different ways. It even coined a brand new medical term for these effects, aspartame disease. A 2007 medical review of the subject concluded that, quote, the weight of existing scientific evidence indicates that aspartame is safe at current levels of consumption as a non-nutritive sweetener. yummy -rific. Aspartame must be avoided, however, by people born with phenylketonuria, also known as PKU, a rare inherited disease that prevents phenylalanine and aspartame from being properly metabolized. So foods containing aspartame in the U.S. must state, phenylketonurics contain phenylalanine on their product labels. Do you know how hard it is to say phenylketonurics? The things I do for you people. In 1976, a young Indian-born scientist named Shaka Kant Fondas was evaluating new chemicals for use in research products when his boss asked him to test the chemical, but he misunderstood and went back to the lab to taste the chemical. And how did it taste? It was pretty sweet. That chemical would become known as sucralose, also known as that stuff in those yellow packets, like Splenda. Sucralose is a chlorinated sugar that is 600 times sweeter than regular sugar. But unlike other artificial sweeteners, it is stable when heated, so it can be used in baked and fried goods. And about 15% of sucralose is absorbed by the body, but most of it passes through the body unchanged. The FDA approved sucralose in 1998, but it's also had its share of sweet, sweet controversy. Only this time it wasn't about safety, it was about marketing. The slogan, Splenda is made from sugar so it tastes like sugar, did not sit well with the competition. But you have to admit it's a better slogan than made from chlorine so it tastes like chemicals. In December 2004, the Sugar Association, an organization representing sugar beet and sugar cane farmers in the United States, filed five separate false advertising claims related to the slogan. The group contends that while Splenda is technically a sugar derivative, it is ultimately nothing more than a quote, highly processed chemical compound made in a factory. But one wonders, if all of the current artificial sweeteners were discovered or created by accident, how will scientists of the future find new sugar substitutes? One also wonders, what's the conclusion? Are sugar substitutes okay or not? Well, there are many studies that question all kinds of health risks to taking the various forms of sweeteners, but we were unable to find any studies which definitively link sweeteners to significant health concerns. Though it is important to note, just because there is industry-wide acceptance, it doesn't follow that it's necessarily safe. Sometimes you just have to go with your gut feeling when it comes to ingesting petroleum-based products. But as our desire for that sweet sugar taste shows no signs of slowing down, the search for new artificial sweeteners continues. From the Big Candy Apple, I'm Kegan, and this is Rocket Boom.